Hello, welcome to Qatar. I'm Michael Mann for Bennett's Bike Social. This is the La Salle International Circuit where they race for MotoGP, World Superbikes. Anyway, today, why are we here? Ta-da! Because of this, Honda's 2020 CBR 1000 RR Fireblade SP. It's a bit of a mouthful. 23 and a half thousand pounds. A lot of this is new. Let's have a look at the details. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in pit lane at the Los Al circuit here in Qatar. Um, we've got two rather special motorbikes, well they're identical. Right behind me over my shoulder it's the 2020 Fireblade, it's the SP model. Uh, there are two bikes in the range, there's a standard bike and the SP. Big differences between the two, um, predominantly the brakes. The quick shift is a stand on the SP. And so the brakes are by Brembo and the suspension is Olin's all around and you've got a, a lightweight lithium ion battery. And there are your big differences between the, the two models. The price difference, so you've got 23 and a half grand for the SP uh, and it's 20 grand all but a penny, well all but a pound, on the standard model. Should be in dealerships early April is the, is the best estimate at the moment. are here in Qatar test riding the bike on track and the easiest thing to start this dialogue is saying that Honda have made a bit of a game changer here so they've made a brand new chapter to their Fireblade history it's been around since 1992 and for all those years since all those models since the focus has firmly been on making it a road bike that is easy to use easy to ride it's got the power it's got the poise it's got the balance but first and foremost, it's a road bike that happens to be very quick on the circuit as well. And look, it's had a hell of a lot of success over those years. But now we're reaching a stage where there's the Panigale V4s, there's the S1000RRs, there's the RS V4s, the R1s, and all those bikes are just increasing in power, increasing in sophistication and electronics and technology and chassis and suspension and so on. That Honda have created essentially a race bike that just happens to be okay when fitted with indicators and a number plate. That's the big talking point of today. Everybody's seen the spec sheets, everybody's seen all the uh, press releases, they've read the reports and the, and, and the previews about what this bike is going to be all about and the headline figure of course is that huge amount of power, 214.56 brake horsepower, 14,500 rpm, 14,500 rpm, that's huge. I mean, all right, it's an inline four, but even so, even for that, it's still massive. All right, let's take a little closer look then, shall we, at all the, uh, the final little details. Beautiful, right? So this is the most powerful, claimed, of course, naturally aspirated inline four available today. It's got the same bore and stroke as the RC213 VS you know, the MotoGP bike for the road that they made a few years back. But that's, again, huge. 13% increase in power in the outgoing models. That's a 2017 model. Torque-wise, uh, 113 Newton meters. That's 83.3 foot-pounds of torque, 12,500 RPM. That is not an increase in the outgoing model. So it's Euro 5 compliant, of course. Weight is 201 kilograms, which puts it in among you know, as far as spec is concerned, it puts it in among those, um, those models we talked about already, the BMW S1000RR, the R1, R1M, the Aprilia RSV 4100 factory, the Ducati Panigale V4S, the new one for 2020, of course. But this is all about a new chassis, new engine, and a lot of new components. Uh, of course, new aero, uh, upgraded electronics, upgraded suspension, a new partnership with uh, Akrapovic, to provide them with this exhaust. And the benchmark has been that RC213VS. 
because of the power, because of the HRC connection. And Honda have made some, a huge amount of technological advancements by using the fellas from HRC. You were down the, down the corridor at the factory over in Japan. They, of course, are responsible for six of the last seven MotoGP World Championships for some bloke called Marquez. So, you know, it's a fairly good benchmark. Overall, the bike is narrower thanks to a lot of the uh, updates in the engine. Like specifically, uh, the valve train is driven by a new gear system, so that allows for higher revving, which is quite handy. This bike loves to rev. We've had a few sessions on it on track today, and it's it's best to ride it like a 600. So it just it just gobbles at the revs. It really loves being up and over about 7,000. Incidentally, there's a butterfly valve in the exhaust, which at 7,000 opens and it gives it that beautiful howl. Below it, you know, if you're out for town riding, you can poodle around and, and not disturb the neighbours or upset the, the townsfolk, but uh, up, and, up and above 7,000 RPM and the thing just goes bananas. It's such a beautiful thing to, to hear. Changes to the top end, they've got uh, well, a diamond-like coating uh, to cut friction, so that's on the cams. They've got, what else, valve, operated finger follower, rocker arms, they've got lighter weight titanium con rods. Even the water and the oil temperature is now regulated in a sort of more efficient way. They've got some jets that... Uh, again, at low RPM, the jets aren't used, but at high RPM, they are used to cool the oil a bit more, which again, just makes it, gives it that sort of, uh, well, more efficient way of running, really. Let me bring you around to the front, show you this Ram air duct. So they've done away with the ignition barrel and they've given it a smart key system, uh, so which is keyless. And then the ignition itself is round here. So you just push the button just there and then, and then flick it off when you want to stop it. And as a result, you can get your arm right the way in there and that pushes the air through. And on track, you can hear it. You can hear it gobbling up all that air into the airbox. You can hear it. it's almost like, almost like a turbocharger. You can hear it go <laughs> So the new frame, it's made of aluminium. It's been tuned for rigidity. Because it's got this you know, much more high, higher powered engine, it means that you can, the, the chassis has got to comply, it's got to be able to handle all that power, of course. So the rigidity is being increased in certain parts and then decreased in other parts just to make sure that it handles correctly and appropriately too. The shock's now mounted to the top of the engine at the back as well, uh, under there somewhere. The subframe is mounted to the top, to the top of the frame to reduce a bit of width. There's so many components about this motorbike that have been taken into consideration. It really is a, a work of art, things like the um, aero there on the on the rear mug guard. We haven't spoken about the wings yet, the aero aero on this bike. But look how well beautifully integrated they are. You can barely tell that we're there. And yet it seems to be the the uh, the fashion these days to have wings. But these are so integrated, they're well designed so they don't stick out like they've just been added on as a bit of a last minute extra. Swing arms longer, the wheelbase is longer, all to give it a much better feel, much more balance in the corners increased uh, stability on the brakes under acceleration. Olin's have got the inverted 43 mil fully adjustable NPX. And that's the Smart EC 2.0 uh, system, the electronic system on that. They use pressurized damping now as well. Bigger discs, you've got 10 mil bigger discs, a 330 twin discs at the front, all controlled by those Brembo Stylimers. It's, like I said, it's a whole new model. I haven't even talked about the electronics yet. There's a new Bosch six axis IMU on this bike, uh, as opposed to the five axis version that was on the previous model. And it's highly sophisticated. So when you're thinking about coming off the throttle and onto the brake, the bike knows that already. As soon as you start decelerating, as soon as you start coming off the throttle, it thinks, right, he's gonna brake now. So I must tense and I must give it some extra stability at the rear and it, um, the suspension acts accordingly. So the IMU, it's a Bosch system, it controls the steering damper, there's three levels of control on that, cornering and rear lift control, functions with the ABS, there's two switchable modes on that by the way, sport and track mode. There's three levels of wheelie control, depending on how, you can turn it off as well. It depends on how you want to, uh, how you want to ride the bike really. But the big, the big takeaway here is that it's, this is, a phenomenal track machine.
and time will tell whether it will translate into a, an awesome road bike as well. Look, like I said, at 7,000 RPM, that butterfly valve in the, in the exhaust opens up. At 7,000 RPM in second, third, fourth gear, you're going to be doing well over the speed limit. It is a law breaker. There's loads of aero trickeries on here as well. Look, even this down to like, the way in which the mudguard, the front mudguard is shaped. It's fantastic. The level of detail, the attention to detail on this motorbike is just extraordinary. The electronics will take a lot of grit and use to. It's a very complex system and it gives the rider a lot of opportunity to optimise their own ride depending on, on where you're going to be using it. I think Honda had said uh, at the back end of last year when this bike was unveiled that they were dead keen on getting more and more riders with this particular bike on track. And you've got so much versatility and so many options with your electronics. So let's see if we can turn this on. Uh, just press the button and the bike should come into life. Flip the ignition and there we have it. So that's your main screen. There's five different screens depending on the, on the way you want your uh, information laid out. At the moment uh, we've been riding this on the track so it doesn't start, the, the rev count doesn't start until five and then your red lines up there are like at 14 and a half. Everything's operated off this left hand bar. You flick, your, flick between your modes by just clutching that button. So they're preset modes. You can then um, change those modes you can change each one of those modes as well uh, by using these these buttons here so if you want to change uh, wheelie control engine braking uh, torque control which of course in in uh, everyday language is traction control whether you want the quick shift or on or off whether you want the power engine power settings um, there's a lot to get used to here so let's have a little listen you want to want it to hear it right Are you okay you ready Bear in mind, this is just tick over. Let's give it a few revs, shall we? Give you a little teaser, see what it's all about. So what we've been able to do here is uh, have a few sessions on track at the Qatar circuit, which is a, it's a long circuit, five kilometers, uh, over five kilometers. It's got a lot of corners here, a lot of fast corners. It's all very open. There's not many references for braking, for turning in. A lot of the apexes are late. We've been given a few sessions to get used to the bike, uh, to get used to the settings. We've been able to come in and we've been able to talk to the guys from Olin's um, or the engineers from Honda to uh, amend those settings giving us an opportunity to obviously feel how they uh, interfere or not. There's some big differences in, in the way in which the throttle sensation is, how sensitive it is. And what's been really cool is how it comes out the last corner and you can crack the throttle on almost aggressively. And yet all those electronics, they look after you. Even when they're dialed down, they still look after you. We've been running Pirelli slicks today, which of course uh, the bike doesn't come on. It comes on either a Bridgestone uh, RS11 or a Pirelli Diablo Supercorsa uh, in the UK. Uh, we've been running slicks today, which of course doesn't give it sort of a, a real life feel, but on track, incredible. It's a, it's a diamond of a bike. It's, it's physics are quite small. It's very much like a 600. It loves to rev. It really begs for revs. And you've got to work it. First and second gear are nice and tall and long. Uh, so you've got a lot of play there. Third and fourth uh, a bit shorter. Didn't even, didn't even use sixth. And this straight here, this straight here, is about a kilometer long. And didn't even get into sixth gear. It didn't really get to the top end of fifth before it was at the limit. So these bikes are limited to 186 miles an hour, which is like a gentleman's agreement between all of the manufacturers. Before you enter that hard braking zone into turn one, which is a second gear right-hander, a lot, it's a long right, a late apex right, so you can carry a, a bit of speed into there. And trail brake too. So you're on the brakes and the thing's so stable. Honda have done a very, very, very good job here. Very good. And it is a, a brand new chapter in the five blade history. It's an incredible bike, it's an incredible track bike, and I think they're gonna have a lot of success on the short circuits with BSB and with World Superbikes. We'll see how it goes on the roads as well. 
uh, the Northwest and the TT. In terms of a road bike, it'd be very, very interesting to get it back in the UK, get it rolling around on the, on the UK roads, especially on that different rubber, especially then trying to dial in the right kind of settings for your journey to work or your Sunday blast with your buddies or whipping into Europe or, or, or however you want to use it. What I will say is that because it has been built specific, built with a primary focus on racing, the seating position is all about racing. So look, I'm six foot tall and the pegs are a lot higher and a lot further back than they used to be. Even with that slightly longer wheelbase and the change in geometry with the handlebars as well being where they are, it's not particularly comfortable. And I was doing the old doctor's dangle with my right leg hanging out into some of the right handers here not to show off, just so I get some feeling back in my foot. So my advice would be to go and have a test ride, but make sure it's a long enough test ride on the roads you're familiar with um, if you're gonna be interested in this bike. It is uh, absolutely sensational uh, as a track bike. And like I said, it'll be interesting to see what it's like back in the UK when we can ride it on the roads. Uh, all in all, uh, yeah, it's blown me away with, uh, with how good it is. What an incredible motorcycle, I am sure you'll agree. Go and test ride one as soon as you get the chance. And it's the start of a brand new chapter for the Honda Fireblade. Uh, thanks for joining me. You can read the full review at bikesocial.co.uk. Oh, stupid microphone.